you don't put somebody in an outpatient program when they need to be detoxed right. from the drug that they're using. And these insurance companies are not giving these people enough time to be in those inpatient programs. I'm Flint Anderson, founder of Pain, parents and addicts in need. I've been in recovery since 2001, and there isn't much I don't know about recovery. And my mission is to constantly tell the truth about addiction, to make the realities of addiction, recovery, and drug culture known, and to drive awareness and advocate change that ultimately saves lives. And I'm Jason Lachance, a certified recovery coach with a passion for speaking with others and sharing their knowledge to help others seek recovery and maintain long-term sobriety. And this is the Don't Hide the Scars podcast, presented by Pain, parents and addicts in need. This is the Don't Hide the Scars podcast, here with the founder of Pain, Flynn Anderson. I'm Jason Lachance, and uh, hey, we got a plethora of things to discuss here. You There's know. that word again. I like big words, <laughs> and I cannot lie. Plethora. I mean, goodness, where do we start? We're incredibly... This is almost like our uh, our uh, updating the nation. Yes, you know? <laughs> abs- absolutely. <laughs> Letting everyone know. Updating the nation with parents and addicts in need. What's going on? I mean, we've been insanely busy. I mean, the amount of places and contacts you've been able to make to get Narcan... Uh, into some schools lately is uh, phenomenal. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, not only schools, but little league programs. And oh, that's right. Remember that little league programs and more individuals coming in uh, just to pick it up. And uh, you know, again, we, we we train them on how to use it. And so so you know, we just got a huge shipment in, and we're almost halfway through the shipment already. So yeah, you know, the 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 initiative is working. Um, I, I wish there were a few more school districts, you know, that would take it. Uh, I'm going to be speaking on Friday to another one. So let's hope we'll be able to get it in, you know, yeah. in, in, in those schools as well. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it tends to be working. Well, and I, I hope that the conversation, I you know, I remember, you know, when I was a teenager, the, the conversation around, you know, safer sex. And, mm-hmm. you know, there was the element of people that were, oh, if you – Tell them how to use a condom, then they you know just run run wild or right. whatever it is. And I, I, I mean, you're out there more than I am. But tell me, do you think that's some people's kind of pushback that they think it's an enabling they do. kind of thing? They do. I'll, I'll I'll never forget the the one lady. This is a number of years ago that um, one of the Clovis schools I can't remember sent a uh, sent a notice home that uh, I was going to come and speak at the you know to the students. And she called the school and said, all you're doing is putting thoughts in the kids' heads about using drugs, you know, and and it's like, (laughs) no, that's not quite what we're doing here. Um, But yeah, I I, look and what concerns me more than anything is and, and I think you've noticed it as well. To me, there has been a decrease in. I, I don't want to use the word advertising, but in continuing to get the message out about how dangerous fentanyl is. Yeah, the advocacy part of it. Has has slipped quite a bit. Right. Now, I'm, I'm not blaming advocates for that. Um, and again, I really don't want to blame too many people here, but you kind of have to blame society for just letting this thing go back under the rug again. Sure. You know, and again, I'm not saying it's totally under the rug. But man, it has it has really dropped off, except for a few of us, like you know, like Tim and myself. And yeah, yeah. Do you think that 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 an element of the you know, like our 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 buddy Tom Wolf in in San Francisco fighting the good fight there? You know, he's faced with a, just an inundation of radical harm reduction. Do you think that's playing a role? I mean, I I don't know. Do are we seeing? Like I live up in Merced County. I don't see any of it, period. I think right. there was a billboard for a little bit about, you know, fentanyl kills and it went away. Maybe they had a small budget that ran out. I don't I don't know, but right. I'm not seeing anything about that or harm reduction per se. Yeah. But I don't know if here in Fresno, you know. Look, for, for a large city as we are of one point something million people, um, we're not San Francisco. We're, we're, we're not pockets of L.A., you know, where we've got I mean, we've got homeless, obviously, but m- the majority of us don't see this. Right. Right. So do do we have the same issues that a San Francisco has? 
yeah, we do have the same issues. I just think that we're so spread out mm. that we just don't see it enough. So when it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And, you know, and then people just move move on and move forward and go to the next thing. Um, but the reality is the fentanyl issue has, has not gone away. It has not subsided in any way, shape, or form. It is still going full bore. Um and so again, it's it's just some of us are are this this is what we do. So yeah. so we're going to be we're going to be out front more than most. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it, it is it is scary. I mean, I I even I recently had a, a bit of an exchange with a um, friend of mine who's a teacher, and you know, hey, do you have any Narcan? I was like, well, what was that? It's like, yeah. okay, so clearly this school, yeah. a high school teacher, does not. Um, so, I, I, you know, I don't know. It's, well, it's well, just mind-boggling to me that it's not being addressed, um, you know, and a part of that kit that's in every classroom. Right, right. And here's another something to think about. I was talking with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago, and we were just kind of talking about, you know, what I do, and and he was curious of, of, of what was going on. And when I mentioned to him that we're doing this Narcan initiative and we're getting, he thinks that's just absolutely wonderful, by the way, because he's got small kids. When I mentioned to him that, that addicts are actually searching out fentanyl, you know, there are fentanyl addicts there mm -hmm. and opioid addicts that, that have to take fentanyl. He was astounded. He had no clue. He literally thought that every death was obviously due, due to an accidental overdose because the addict didn't know what they were taking. Right. And I said, Tom, I said, you got to understand when you are a fentanyl addict or an addict in, in a position to where you need a stronger drug, you're going to move to that stronger drug. So, yes, we are as addicts seeking that drug out. Oh, yeah. So I think there's still a lot of people out there that believe that way. I agree. And, and the, the scary part about and that I think that they don't understand, too, if they don't understand that, then they don't understand the rate at which a fentanyl addict goes from any kind of dependency to full-blown addiction to bam they're gone right if they get the time they have no clue yeah they I mean, have they have no you clue. know i know some people say two years some say 18 months maybe max i mean i'm kind of at that 10 month range yeah i mean really if you think about it because you know near the end of it because fentanyl you know has such a short short legs on it, so to speak. So about uh -huh. two hours later, three hours at most, you're wanting to get your next fix. Right, right. Un unless, of course, it's laced with any type of benzo, which right. stretches that, that lifespan of the drug out even further. Or a horse tranquilizer. Or a horse tranquilizer <laughs> right. or God knows what, you yeah. know, they're putting in that stuff. Which we don't mean to, you know, laugh, but no. I mean, we've seen it. Philadelphia is really bad with the yeah. xylazine and all these other things that right. are thrown in there. It's just insane. Right, 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 right. Well, you know, and, and again, as we as we sit here in Fresno and the Valley and, and, and do our thing here, um, you know, we have taken a few steps to expand the pain organization a little bit, yeah, you know, and um, and so we're, we're we've been we've been obviously you and I, we've been looking at some <laughs> uh, at, at at some different locations, you know, where we can um, lend our hand, so to speak, and of course Los Angeles is is one of those. We have a lot of contacts there, um, a lot that you've brought, you know, into into the organization. And, um, and, and so, you know, as the, as the months start to unfold here, um, we're, we're going to be, um, you know, concentrating some of our efforts down in the LA area, yep. um, because I know they have a problem getting Narcan in their schools. Um, and, and so with the help of guys again, like Tim Ryan and Dan Carity and, you know, some of these, these gentlemen, uh, and, and hopefully some others that we're going to be able to do that as well. 
New Perceptions North, the premier drug and alcohol treatment and recovery center in Central California. A full continuum of medically supervised top quality care with programs for detox and patient residential treatment with dual diagnosis, intensive outpatient treatment, sober living support groups, and more. New Perceptions North provides adult men and women with the highest caliber of professional health care, treating each client with compassion and respect in a safe, comfortable environment to begin the process of recovery to proudly create and sustain a life without addiction. Call 559-978-1507 or visit newperceptionsnorth.com. It's kind of quite cool. exciting. It, yeah. it really is. Yeah. yeah if really you is. if you go and admire my nice uh, website work, you'll see that uh, not only did Alyssa Flora, Flores um, – Hop up on there. Uh, you know, she's been a part, I mean, goodness, the last couple of uh, donor dinners, the right. host, and she's an amazing woman now, uh, you know, formal, former news anchor here, now up at UC Merced as a public information officer. And then, like you mentioned, Tim Ryan coming on board. And I mean, uh, you know, Tim's, uh, uh, we'll have to get him on and talk with him soon. You know, such yep. an interesting story. He's been on before, you know, about uh, different topics, but um haven't really dug into his story. I mean, he was a he was a successful businessman that he, he was. was a heroin addict and yeah. all this stuff came crashing down, went and got sober in prison right. of all places. Um, you know, sadly losing his son uh, on six, his sobriety date. Yeah, six months after he got out. Yeah. Yeah. So it was yeah, I think a full year. Right. Um yeah, it's uh But such a good guy. Yeah. You know. A straight shooter. Oh, he's a straight shooter. <laughs> which, which works well for us. Right. Now now we got two we got two of us. Yeah. Uh three of us. And and uh it's 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 gonna be interesting to say the least. Yeah. Because and, and what I mean by that is is in a in a fantastic way, you know, because we, we do. We need straight shooters in this thing. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't need game players, you know, we, we don't need, we just don't need any of that stuff. And, and, and the last thing Tim is, is a game player, you know, he's going to tell you exactly what he thinks. (laughs) And I love that. I'm just seeing it now. Maybe some fundraising t-shirts, you know, your, your saying was always, uh, tell the fucking truth. (laughs) So, you know, maybe we bleep that out and tell the fucking truth. Fentanyl kills, you know, or something here, you know, or I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, I'm excited about the possibilities here moving forward, what we can do, where we can, um, you know, get in and help. And it's not always – it was interesting because we were talking before this, and oftentimes, you know, people think that the, the areas most in need are those impoverished, which is true. But also we've dealt with it. I've dealt with it personally. I believe you have too is the people that have the money and a lot mm-hmm. of yes men behind it. Right. I mean, we saw it. We talked about it twice at the end of the year, Matthew Perry being gone. Makes right. you wonder, you know, speculate, were there yes men there? Were there doctors that simply because of what they were being paid? And I don't mean in a in a bad way per se, but, you know, like, oh, that's Matthew Perry. People can be taken back by a star or whatever it is. It's, and it wasn't in the best interest of their patient. Exactly. Yeah. The, you know, we always go back to the Michael Jackson because that's kind of where this whole concierge doctor thing with celebrities and mm. substance abuse kind of began. You know, well, it actually began with Elvis, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh, whatever, whatever. What was that doctor's name? I okay. remember offhand. I remember. Um, you know, but I mean, the guy's shooting them up with cocaine and then shooting them up with benzos and shooting them up with painkillers yeah. and, you know, till or, you know, Elvis just didn't know whether to shit or go blind, to be honest with you. Right. Um, but no, that's, that's, and, and so one of our hopes is, you know, as we, as we venture down south and, um, and, and, and because we, we are, because our, one thing is our parents support meetings here in Fresno have, have always been here. They're always going to be here. By the way, I don't want anybody to misunderstand this. We're not moving. Yeah. O- okay. We're staying right here in Fresno. Um, but those, those family support meetings have been just an amazing, amazing part of this, of this organization for 15 years. And, um, and now, because we don't see many of those. Mm the style in which we do these. Um, we don't see many of these uh, in, in, in other areas. Um, we see more of the, again, nothing wrong with them, the, the 12-step based 
uh, no, no cross talking, no discussion. You tell, you know, you walk in, you tell your story and, and move on. In fact, I got a call from a lady in Colorado yesterday, mm, you know, right. that, that she stumbled across our podcast. That's how she found us. And, um, and, and called and said, um, yeah, you just asked me some questions about her daughter, and I told her about the parent meeting. She goes, "My God!" She goes, "That's what we've been looking for. We've been going to certain meetings, certain p- parent support mm-hmm, meetings, mm-hmm. but we're just not getting out of it what we need to get out of it, right? You know, type of thing. So we're looking forward to doing that in Los Angeles as well. Yeah. So kind of start this, you know, this 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 movement, if you want, if you want to say, uh, down there because you're you're right. You know, when you're dealing. When you're dealing people that have that financial backing or have that finan- financial uh, means that that they don't have to worry about money, it, it's it's another animal. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it it really really is. Um, a lot of times, and you said it. You know these these celebrities, or or people with money in general, it doesn't have to be a celebrity. But people get enamored by that. Yeah. You know, again, Michael Jackson's doctor. I, I, I think I read at some point that Jackson was paying him somewhere to around twenty to $25,000 a month. Well, when Michael Jackson says, hey, I, I, I need Valium, the doctor's going to give it to him. Yeah. You know, doctors can cross that line as well. Like, I'm not saying they're evil or bad or anything else. But I think there's a bigger problem than anybody realizes in, in, in some of these areas with people with money because they can afford to go to treatment five, six, seven times a year if yeah. they want to at 50 grand a pop or 100 grand a pop because that's nothing to them, yeah. you know, as opposed to us normal folks, you know, that are lucky to go to one, right? <laughs> right. And then, it, and, 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 and again, it's, it's, it's just a whole different, um, I don't know. I don't even know what the word is anymore. It, it's just it's just a whole. Do I want to say route to sobriety? I, I, I mean, I know people will use that. It's just not the route that I would take. Sure. Well, and I think that that's the you know you you've made such a good point um, several times here on don't hide the scars about the two types of treatment: those with insurance, those without, or without slash, you know, government-based insurance and, and what they get out of it. And a lot of, you know, I was asking you, you know, well, what, what does aftercare look like? Is it is there something similar? Is there IOP options? Is it, you know, and so it just makes me wonder about that process too that, that varies for, you know, people. Yeah. Look, even if you have Medi-Cal, okay, there are treatment options, especially for outpatient. Mm. Okay, um, I don't know the exact time span that uh, that a governmental aid insurance will keep you in an outpatient program. I know, though, there's there's some time there. It's 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 at least sixty days in a lot of cases. Um, but again, when you're dealing with people with with the means. You know they can stay an inpatient for as long as they want. Yeah. They can they can continue an outpatient as long as they want without without the help of their PPO insurance policy. Um, so, but but again, we we all know that are most of us that are in recovery and that work in this in this field that outpatient, as critical as it is to one's recovery. You don't put somebody in an outpatient program when they need to be detoxed right. from the drug that they're using. And these insurance companies are not giving these people enough time to be in those inpatient programs. So does that make you fearful for the individual that doesn't have the cash money when the insurance runs out that they does. will be put on? Potentially a long-term harm reduction it does. modality. It does. It 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 concerns me. <sighs> Again, like we like we've been talking about for months now is 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 the long her, long-term harm reduction piece to this, and I think our society has gotten to a point where 
they're, they're, in essence, what they're saying is, we, we really don't care if you get clean and sober or not. We just don't want you stealing. We just don't want you crapping in the streets. And so we're going to put you on something here that's going to, by the way, it will help curb that. Sure. Okay. But it's really, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, again, I don't mind getting flack for this. It's just, to me, it is not in the best interest, again, of the patient or of the client because it's keeping that person in some sort of trap yeah. that is going to take a lifetime to get out of. Yeah. Well, do, you know, a couple episodes ago, we had uh, Joey Guerriero on again, and he talked about that. He that did. He, he, he made sure when it's time to leave that, oh, shoot, do I, do I got my box on my back pocket. I can't leave the house without it. Right. Um, you know, granted, okay, he was leaving the house and maybe this time wasn't trying to find that dealer, but it, he was trying to illustrate how strapped he still was to this yeah. substance. And, and my, my perspective, the scary thing from what I see is, you know, now it's becoming as easy as teledoc right. to get it. Right. I read that. I read that, by the way. I mean... Th- th- that to me brings up all kinds of red flags. Yeah. You know, what happens if it gets lost in the mail? What happens if they forget to call it in? Right. I mean, that alone is a nightmare. Yeah. Well, Joe, you brought that up too. Remember he said he, uh, he was on it. And for whatever reason, the doctor had to cancel an appointment. He ran out. What did he do? Went out and got pills you bet because you're going to go through withdrawals either way it's still an opioid either way it's not like this is the little listerol uh you know little lozenge you put on there to clean up your breath you're, you're getting an opioid yeah yeah and and again what happens if the te- i mean you have to be careful of these sites hmm? what if they're not even giving you what they're telling you they're giving you I mean, there's, there's, there. It, look, if there's a way for somebody to make money off of this nightmare that we're in, there's people that are going to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And that always concerns me. That always concerns me. Because again, we're not solving the problem. Yeah. We're we're putting on a tiny band aid on a gaping wound. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but look, I've, I've also th- been thinking a lot about this lately. There's not much that we can do to stop that. People are going to do what they're going to do. We here at, at, at Payne simply have to do this. We have to help the person who wants to be helped. Yeah. You know. We can go, we're going to go out. We're going to continue to spread our, spread our message. We're going to continue to tell people the way we, we, we think on this and believe in this. And anybody and everybody is welcome. But if somebody wants to go down that other road, my only retort to that is we're here when you want to come back. Yeah. Because, again, this is a society of so many options. So many options. I don't care what the subject is. I mean, and and as and as an addict myself, when I was in my active addiction or even right after it, I would have always taken the easy way out. Sure. That's what we do. <laughs> it was our lifestyle. It's our lifestyle. Yeah. That's what that's that's what we do. You know, it's interesting when you talk to Tim Ryan, when you talk to Tom Wolf, um, when we talk to Tim Lodgen, and when we talk to, uh, you know, Dan and, you know, and, and, and all these other men and women and Jennifer. And You know, abstinence is, abstinence is our life. Mm-hmm. And that's what. And that's what we are going to continue to promote.
If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, please call Payne, Parents and Addicts in Need at 559-579-1551 or visit us online at paynonprofit.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Pain Nonprofit. And please subscribe to the Don't Hide the Scars podcast and share with others wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. And if you would like to donate to Pain, Parents and Addicts in Need, please click the link in the description to make your tax deductible donation today and help us save more lives gripped by addiction. So we were talking about those with insurance, those without, those with either fame or notoriety or or money, how do how do we help them? Like, how do not only how do we help them, but how do we help the people the the without insurance, so to speak, people, the people that don't have the cash money in the aftercare process? I I, I think it's a really I don't know if so much by the addict but maybe the loved ones on how vital that is, especially when we're, you know, for me, I've talked about this. I don't think on here, but I know I have to you, you know, I had to really consciously come to a point and I'm so grateful for 12 step programs and everyone that's there sponsors. I mean, I still attend, you know, from time to time, but there was a point where it was like, Ooh, I got to start taking all this back into the real world real world because I didn't, I didn't go to rehab. It wasn't an option for me. There was no cash and there wasn't insurance that was going to help that become an option. So for me, that's where I had to go, of course, as an alcoholic, but someone that's an opioid addict, maybe longer term run. This is the big thing that I'm seeing because we're talking more you and I, and what we want to do is really actually offer solutions. That's what people are asking. Right. They're like, Hey, I'm aware. What's what's the solution? Well, again, the 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 solution, if there is one, is long term treatment for these people, and and I'm afraid that we are that that we have enabled for so long, and we continue to do so. I'm sad to say I, I don't think we're going to be able to literally help those people that have been in their addiction for, for, for so long that, that don't have the means, even if they had the means to get help. The treatment industry is so screwed up that nobody's providing long-term treatment for anybody. Hmm. But people have to understand what long-term treatment is. I, I, I believe it starts there. Long-term treatment is not going to is not going to a treatment center for 30 days, going into an outpatient program for a month or two, and then sending them off to meetings. That's not long-term treatment. Long-term treatment is going through the detox phase, staying in a residential environment for six months. Included in that six months, of course, is is the the, the therapeutic side to it, Mm -hmm. learning how to live, learning how to... uh, uh, Again, just simplicity, learning how to apply for a job, and then after that six months into a sober living facility, stretching that out as long as possible, I think that's utopia. (laughs) All right. I, I just don't think we're ever going to get to that point. We have screwed this up from the beginning. Hmm. We have screwed this up from the beginning. And 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 you have to break it down. As, as much as I don't like to do this, it, this is the reality. 
if you or I were living on the streets in San Francisco and we've been there for two years, three years, five years, I'm going to say it. I don't think there's any hope. I just don't. Sadly, I agree. Okay. Because we don't offer what is needed to help people. Yeah. What is truly needed. And that's going to take billions of dollars, not millions, but billions of dollars. And I think that everybody is afraid to take that chance. Yeah. I think I think politicians don't want to approve or vote for programs like this. I think that again we we have put ourselves in a position when I talk when I talk about that we've lost a generation we've lost more than a generation yeah and until we can again I, I, I half the time I don't even know what to say on this topic because because I, I just don't think we're we're ever going to see it, and 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 that is that is just hor horrific, yeah. In in my mind, it's it's horrific. Now you've got somebody that is so, that their that their brain is so miswired because of their substance use and or mental health mixed in there. That how can we how can we even think that a, a simple thirty day program is going to work on somebody? Yeah, because in essence we're we're asking, okay, here's thirty days, so you got to go from wanting to kill yourself. It essentially is. I mean, that's where we're at, and so we got to get you to where you self care is a priority, and with that. You got to have all these tools that you can develop as well. In addition, very importantly, a community to reach out to. And you need to accomplish that all within, a, within four weeks. Right. That's it's an astronomical feat that I'm, you know, in total seven years sobriety, but in my longest yeah. consecutive over three years, um, I'm still figuring out. Right. I'm still finding it. Right. You know? Right. It's... Uh, it's it's an insane ask. It's an insane ask for someone to do. It, it it is especially you know I think about maybe you know tell me if I'm wrong. New perception, new perceptions where it's at location. Let's say your client comes in from another state. Well, the resources that we might have are just you know here in the Central Valley for groups. We may not have someone in Colorado. I know we try like with such situations where we've gotten people help out of state and connected them wherever it is. It's, it's a huge ask. Mm -hmm. It's a huge ask, especially in an industry where people seem to want to just be, you know, I know you try, but I've seen with so many others where it's like, nope, not going to happen. You talked about it, trying to pull it together here in Fresno. Yeah. 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 It, it's, so, so, so the question stands, you know, how, how, how do we pull ourselves out of this? How do, how do we even begin mm. to pull ourselves out of this? And those questions right now can't be answered. They, 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 they simply can't be answered. So I think what we do as a society is we do the next, I don't even want to say the next best thing, but we do the, we, 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 we do the next um, <laughs> we, we, we do the next thing that we think might work. Sure. Would you say it's low hanging fruit? Yeah. Okay. And, but what we're doing is not working. Yeah. It's, it's not working. That's, that's what I'm saying. I think, I think we're lost. Yeah. I, I, I do. 
our greatest hope is to continue to do what we're doing and going after the younger generations. And hopefully our message will get out to where these, these people will not follow that path. Yeah. That's, that is, to, to, to me, that is our only hope here. Because if you've got, I mean, let's just, let's just take a few numbers. If you've got 25,000 practicing addicts in San Francisco, and they're, they're, they're on the street, and they're, they're you know, again, defecating, they're, they have no life whatsoever, their, their only concern is where their next fix is coming from. Out of those 25,000 people, I would probably say, and I'm guessing, that maybe, maybe 3,000 people would be able to attain some sort of sobriety. I mean, that's, that's and I, don't, and I think maybe even 3,000 is too much. Yeah. It's too high a number. And as we continue to give them whatever they want, well, I don't, I don't want to say it that way. As, as we continue to just let them live. Yeah, they receive some provisions that they, they, they do. give a semblance of, of you know. Survival, I guess. Survival, because that's all they're doing is surviving. Yeah. At this point, we we are um, again. We we are just part of that problem. That there, there there just isn't a solution out there until until again the powers that be want to recognize that th- there are certain things that we're going to have to do in order to to fix this. Yeah. But like I said, it's going to take billions of dollars. It's it's I'm not going to see it in my lifetime. I doubt if you'll see it in your lifetime. I really do. Yeah. When you're dealing with with a disease like addiction and when we know there's no cure for it, How do we so, sometimes it's frustrating for us to keep doing what we're doing when I what or or it's frustrating for me sometimes to to keep going when I know that there's no cure and when I know there's no help out there and when I know there's there's no nobody's talking about solutions. I mean, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. You're going to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. The rest of us that are in this, we're, 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 we're not going to give up. And that's why it's important for us that, that, that work in this thing to, to, to take it one person at a time. Yeah. And hopefully we can just help that one person at a time. But like I said, un, un, until we make the, the massive changes that we need to make, I, 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 just, I, I, I don't think that we're going to get anywhere. Yeah, not a societal shift. No. Yeah. No. But we sure try to meet everyone where they're at. Well. And keep hope alive. Yeah. But I, I'm, and that statement, need to meet everybody where they're at. What does that even mean? Are what, you asking me? I am. What, is that, what, is, what does that even mean? Well, I think for us, it could be somebody coming along at a different point within the process. Hopefully, well. I don't know. Maybe they're totally off in an addiction. Maybe they're in an early stage of recovery and, you know, need a little getting over the hump or the family member that, you know, the the mom gets it, the dad doesn't. I'm not, you know, I, I kind of have looked at it as a overall encompassing thing to, you know, like really kind of like you do with people, bring them in, you've brought in full families or just the addict themselves and really assess like what is going on? Why is it? I mean, it, and you get a, you've gotten some beautiful insight on, on people that, you know, 
the family doesn't have the ability to pull back and see the dynamic. Um, so I think it's I think it's a pretty wide net cast it being is. cast by saying that. It is. Um, and it's, maybe not everybody's fit to cast the net. I know I'm not. Like if some I had somebody that was like, "Well, could, could you perform an intervention?" I'm like, "Well, I'm a, I'm capable as far as I can speak, I can hear, and I'm above ground. Am I skilled? Have I done? No, that'd be incredibly irresponsible." So for me in that situation to be like, hmm, "I've got it, but I've got someone to defer to." Hey, Flint, you know, Family sure. X need you know. See, but I but I think a lot of times when somebody says we're going to meet them where they're at, is God, I, I'm, I'm having a real difficult. I'm just having a difficult time with that statement as as mm. as a whole. Do you think that it can that it can kind of come across as not only meet them where they're at, but accept and just leave them where they're at? Yeah. Or let's 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 give them another option. Again, such as harm reduction. Sure. Instead of, I guess what 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 I'm saying it means to me is that let's meet them where they're at. Instead of meeting them and telling them what it's going to take hmm. for you to start your road to recovery here. Hmm. And here's the truth about it. Valid. Very valid point. And here's the truth about it. I finally got it out. <laughs> well. I finally got it out. All right. Because, no, because I've been wrestling with that statement for a long time. Sure. You know, I'll meet anybody where they're at. I'll meet them on a street corner. I'll meet them in a restaurant. I'll meet them, you know, at a church. I'll meet them at a school. I'll meet them anywhere where they're at. But when somebody says we're going to meet them where they're at, that tells me that they're going to meet them where they are mentally. Right. Well, I think it's mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Oh, 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 okay. But let's just cut out the spirituality right off the bat because sure. addicts, the, come on, your spirit, spirituality is gone. Oh, yeah, and you're... Yeah. At, at, at that point. So we're meeting them at where they're at mentally. Yeah. So when you're, when you're meeting an addict where they're at mentally, where do you fucking think they are mentally? You're not dealing with a, 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 a mental, a mental, What's the word I'm trying to think of here? Gosh, dang it. Someone that's at full capacity, Something rational. That's, at, that's, yeah. a, that's a rational yeah. human being. Yeah. And this might be something we just have to explore and converse about more down the line. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I just, I just, I, 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 what I'd like us to do is to kind of explore that meet them where they're at thing a little bit more. I'll make a note. You know, Um but I think that's 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 important to say when you're meeting somebody where they're at, where are they at mentally? Yeah. Are they capable of even understanding what somebody is trying to tell them? Yep. And nine and a half out of ten times they're not. Yeah. yeah. Because they're gonna go with what they know. They're gonna argue with the person that is giving them the best advice. And so how how how? So again, that to, again, we're meeting them more to that. What we're just going to enable them, I guess. Yeah, yeah, very potentially. Well, we'll explore it more. Yep. Uh, anyways, thank you for uh, listening to the podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, or if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, leave the thumb up, leave a comment, and uh, hey, keep spreading the word. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, please call Pain Parents and Addicts in Need at 559-579-1551 or visit us online at painnonprofit.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at 
pain nonprofit. And please subscribe to the Don't Hide the Scars podcast and share with others wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. And if you would like to donate to pain, parents and addicts in need, please click the link in the description to make your tax deductible donation today and help us save more lives gripped by addiction.